On today's episode, I'm going to do my best to define some guitar tone buzzwords. I'm not a dictionary. I'm just a normal guy. But somebody has to try to do this. And today's the day. Let's go for it. The first buzzword we need to tackle is transparent overdrive. This is one that's everywhere. People talk about it, people argue about it, people say things are transparent, people say things aren't transparent. So what is transparent? Webster's defines this as having the property of transmitting light without appreciable scattering so that bodies lying beyond are clearly seen. I don't know about you, but that's a little bit of a morbid definition. I don't want to talk about bodies laying around. I just want to talk about guitar tone. And what you need to know is transparent overdrive is really simple. It's an overdrive that keeps the sound of your guitar and the sound of your amp in place and just adds a little bit of dirt. It doesn't give a big mid boost like a lot of Tube Screamer style pedals. It doesn't add a ton of bass. It just keeps things like they are, but gives you a little bit more. So let's demonstrate that with the Morning Glory. It's transparent, you leave it on, you turn it off. The only difference is a little more grit. A lot of pedals do this, but I'm going to show this guy. True bypass. What is it? A lot of you are losing sleep, but I'm here to help. Here's how it all happened. Here's the story. I'm going to get you through this. In the 1960s, pedals hit the scene. They're awesome, but when you turn them off, they never really turn off. They kind of ruined your original signal, and that's not good. So by the 1970s, people are trying to figure out how to fix this, how to do it better. And then companies come along like Boss and they perfect a system called electronic FET switching, buffered bypass switching. Now, I really like it. I think it's genius because when you push the foot pedal, you basically touch a momentary button that's located underneath this foot pad. It's just the same thing that's in a computer keyboard when you're typing, but all it's doing is telling a circuit, you hit this, that activates the little button, and the button talks to the circuit and says, hey, they want to change the routing. So instead of your guitar going in through the overdrive and out, you click it, it goes in through a FET transistor away from the circuit and out, and it works really, really well. But by the 1990s, we have a boutique boom and a lot of builders start building things in their homes and there's this whole new scene. The best example I can think of is Full Tone, the full drive Mike Fuller, genius company, amazing designer. He starts using mechanical switches. When you click them, they pop, they make a noise, and that's mechanical. So it's basically this, small little mechanical foot switch. You have your signal, it's going through your overdrive, but when you click it, it reroutes it completely around. No circuitry, nothing. It's a light switch for your guitar. Turn it on to get your overdrive, turn it off to just have your clean signal. And it's good. But is it best? No, they're both really good. If you want to know more about this, go watch my myths episode. And for now, let's go to another buzzword because now you know what true bypass is. Boutique. We got to know what this means. We see it all over the place. Is this pedal boutique? Is this amp boutique? So what does it even mean? Webster's defines it as a small company or business that builds highly specialized products or has highly specialized services. And I think that's perfect. I think that 
lays it out. That's exactly what it is. And an example of this to help you through understanding is that when I started in 2007, I was definitely boutique. So I built everything myself. I hand populated every board. I labeled the cases. I shipped them everything. I did every email. It was very small, very specialized, but we've grown. I have around 25 employees and I'm not even going to claim to be boutique. You know, I'm concerned with making high quality products, great service and all that. We do a good job of that, but I don't think JHS is boutique anymore. And I really don't think there are a lot of boutique builders left. I know that's a sticky statement, but I stand by that. I think that some of the people who are still in the boutique land are Analog Man. A lot of his builds are still very boutique. Scotty at Pro Analog. And then I also think of Paul C and his Timmy pedal out of Tennessee. So this is boutique. I think that's what it means. One person, maybe a couple helpers, specializing in something very particular and it's still small, and that's boutique. Let's leave it at that, let's play this. I'm gonna add some delay, the DD200. Let's do it, let's go for it. Let's hear some boutique overdrive. But wait, he just did a version of the Timmy with MXR. They're a big company. He's not boutique, I, but, but, he, but he's still making the one that's made by hand. I, I guess he is. Yeah, yeah, he, he's still boutique because he's, he's doing the other one as well. Yeah, it's fine. Wait, my cables are just they're just normal patch cables and I'm using a boss delay. That's not boutique. That's not boutique. Yeah, I, I can't stand for that. I can't say my tone is boutique because it, it's not all handmade. But do I care? It sounds so good. Listen. It's boutique. This 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 riff was boutique. I, th I believe it was. Let's move on. Sustain, also known as sustain. What is it? What do people mean when they say this? I see conversations, and there's no way that the people are referring to the same thing. It's it's like a semantical nightmare. That's a good band name, by the way. But what is sustain? I, I know I can hear it. Listen. You know, as guitarists, when we hear this term, we think of a guitar, a note searing with huge distortion through time and space, bringing kings and gods to their knees. And we want it all in a pedal. And it's really confusing. In 69, Electro Harmonics released the Big Muff. And even on this reissue, you're going to notice it says sustain for the fuzz control. And I think this is where it all started sustain, buzz, and it gets really confusing. And then in the 70s, a little bit later, we see Roland and Boss start to create distortion-free sustainers in contrast to the Big Muff. Basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug up this Boss compression sustainer. We're gonna listen to the clean tone. We're gonna sustain it, compress it, expand it, and then for fun, just for kicks, we're gonna put on a PG-14. We're gonna add some distortion, more sustain, and I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm actually not looking forward to this.
scooped mids. I'm not sure where it first showed up. I'm going to guess the 80s. You know, we've all scooped ice cream. A lot of us have scooped poop. But have you ever scooped your mids? Only you can answer that. Let's take an Angry Charlie. Let's get it searing, raging like a JCM 800. And then I'm going to turn this mid control all the way off, essentially scooping the mids. And you're going to hear a familiar sound. Whether you like it is up to you. Dumble-esque. Is that overdrive Dumble-esque? Is it a Dumble-style sound? What, what does this mean, Dumble-esque? So a lot of you have no clue. You've maybe seen this word. You just don't even want to try. Here's the basics. There's a guy, Howard Dumble, Alexander Howard Dumble. He starts modifying Fender amps around 1963. Then he gets a job for Moz Wright and he designs some amps for the Ventures. He sees success and then he goes out and starts a solo career as an amp builder. Now this is the time when Mesa Boogie's starting companies like that and he starts building these high gain, hot rotted Fender style circuits, but really unique. He goops the circuits. He puts black epoxy all over stuff. You can't see what he's doing. It's super mysterious. It's eccentric, it's wild, it's fascinating, and you can't look away. He only builds them for people he wants to build them for. They end up in a lot of famous players' hands, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Johnson. And nowadays, you really only see them with John Mayer or Bonnie Raitt or Robin Trower. You gotta have some serious money, you gotta be able to invest in these, and they're crazy. And if you look on Reverb.com, the prices are bananas. They're like the price of a house. That said, what is Dumble-esque? I don't know exactly because I think it's impossible to define because all of his amps sound different. I've played 10, they all sounded different. Some of them were the same model, but yet you see people saying the pedal sounds like a Dumble or this amp sounds like a Dumble. Is there a Dumble sound? I don't know. So I'm phoning in a friend. Eli from Two Rock. I own several of his Dumble inspired amps. He knows more than anybody. Here's what he says. I just said to him, what is Dumble-esque? What does it mean? I tell people this is our interpretation of what we think that is. It's, the, it's our incarnation of all of the best Dumbles that we've played. If you look at the steel string singer thing, it's like, hey, I like the front end of this one. I like the power supply of this one. I like the feel of this one. And we've kind of just pulled the best pieces of them to try to make our, you know, Dumble inspired amplifiers, but we don't make a direct clone because like you said, they're all so different. We're all inspired by that Dumble less kind of thing. If we're building high end boutique gear that holds together really well, all the Dumbles I play do have the characteristic that the low end holds together really nice. It's like a snare drum. They kind of fold on top of each of themselves as you throw pedals on them on opposed to you know, a lot of vintage amps and stuff kind of fall apart once you get past that, you know, three or four on the master volume or the volume, they just start to deteriorate. The dumbbells do hold together very nicely and they're a good platform, but overdrive channels, they're all so different. There are tons of pedals out there that are dumbbell themed, like the overrated special. I love how it looks. It's just very like, I'm a dumbbell, has the font and everything. One of the first was probably the Zen Drive. Then you have Mojo Hands Extra Special. This is definitely Dumble inspired. And then Vertex has several. The Still String Slinger, well, Still String Clean Overdrive. And then you have the Ultraphonics. Now, do these sound like a Dumble? I don't know because what does a Dumble sound like? They're all different, but I get the theme here and they're very cool pedals. 
All of these I absolutely love and would put on my board. I think they're all great. This is one of my favorites that falls into the Dumble inspired sound or Dumble-esque term. Now this is an overdrive and I think it's really unique. It's trying to mimic the distortion channel of a Dumble amp. Does this sound like a Dumble? You be the judge. I'm just gonna play it. And I think I'm gonna play some math jazz rock, like jazzy math, math jazz. Let's do it right now. is when I hear someone say, hey, I'm looking for that earthy mid-range. I'm not completely sure where this started or what it even means. Webster defines earthy as resembling dirt or soil. My guitar tone has never looked like dirt or soil. I really don't know how to look at my guitar tone. But I'll tell you this, I think we can figure this out. I think I know what it is. It's that stratty slightly dirty, slightly gritty sound that comes in those those uh, in-between positions on a Stratocaster or any guitar where you're combining the pickups. So that kind of phasey, multi-pickup sound. So I'm going to add the Moonshine in. This is a real mid-range heavy, dare I say Dumble-esque. Did I just say Dumble-esque? Moonshine in. This is a real mid range heavy, dare I say, Dumble esque overdrive. It's going to get us some earthy tones, and we're going to add some of the clean blend in as well. I'll tell you what, I'm going to add some angelic picking attack. We're going to add that Dumble esque grit and attitude. Dumble esque. And we're going to get dirtier and earthier than a farmer coming home at quitting time. <laughs> haunted. They apparently can be earthy. So let's talk about this one. Now I noticed a buzzword floating around in comments on Instagram, particularly our account. People would say the mids are so haunting and it was always with like an LOL or a laughing cry face. And I thought that's funny. That's enough silly for me. It's like, can mids be haunting? I, I just thought it was awesome. So around 2017, I released a limited pedal for Halloween, and I called it Haunting Mids. Now, this is an active mid pre-amplifier. It's a mid boost, a parametric EQ, you might say. And it did really well. We put it out. And uh, then I realized there was a pedal called Haunting Mids and a whole backstory. Now, I drug myself into this. A lot of people thought I knew about that, but I just want to read the, the situation because actually it's confusing. So here's what happened. Apparently, around 2006, an awesome wah designer, Jeffrey Tease, he's amazing, the Tease Wahs, go buy one, they're fantastic. He coined this term on the gear page. This is, to my understanding, what happened. He said haunting mids. I could see this because he makes wahs and was are full of mids. Maybe I'm missing something, but that's where I'm at so far. And there was a group of people who left the gear page, kind of like a strange split or something. 
I don't know, a schism. And they started a forum and called the forum Haunting Mids as an insult to the people at the gear page over their disagreement. Again, I don't know a lot of detail here. Then the Haunting Mids forum, it was hauntingmids.com, they made some fuzzes. Someone made fuzzes. I don't know who made them, but they say hauntingmids.com. And there's like a hundred of these or 50. I don't know. And they go for crazy money on Reverb. About a year later, I put this out full bore. It's a great product. Unaware of all that that went on and just honestly not caring at this point. So let's see what haunted mids sound like. I'm going to crank my amp. It's going to naturally distort. And then we're going to slam on this mid boost. We're going to haunt the mids. I'm going to go between high and low range. And uh, we're just going to see what happens. Did I just scoop the mids? Yeah, I scooped the mids. Apparently, you can scoop haunted mids. Next up is the buzzword or buzz phrase, smooth highs. Does this pedal have smooth highs? Not sure where it came from, but I remember back in the early days when I modified pedals, I saw people saying that their mod smoothed out the high end. And I'm going to be honest and confess to you that I even put this in a lot of my copy because I didn't know what else to say. So basically, we're taking a pedal that has a little too much high end treble, and we're smoothing it out. By smooth, we're just saying we're removing some of it. So let's take a Proco Rat. It can be really bright. We're going to set it up bright. We're going to put a Boss EQ after it and the 6.4K slider. I'm just going to barely bump it down and we're going to smooth those highs. That's what you're going to see happen here. You're not ready for it. It's super gripping. It's riveting. It is inspiring what I'm about to do. Smooth highs. buzzword of today's episode is probably my favorite. It's fun to just look at it and it's fun to say. So say it with me. Complex harmonics. It's great. It's, it's awesome. I see this. I see people asking if this distortion has complex harmonics or this amp is very complex in the harmonics. I'm not completely sure what it means. I'm, I'm not good at this high level thinking, but I do, I do want to try to approach this here. So I'm a member of a Facebook gear group that I really enjoy. It's called Pedal Boards of Doom. Go over there. You can be a member, I think. And it's generally a really positive forum. It doesn't have, you know, there's not a lot of bobos over there starting trouble. And I love the conversation. A lot of intelligent people. And it's fun. So... I asked them, hey, what are complex harmonics? And I got 123 responses. I'm not going to read them all, but I am going to read a few. 
because we're trying, we're detectives, you and I. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. Here's some, here's some stuff for our case. Harmonics infused with a blend of 21 herbs and spices. It's possible. A conversation with your wife. Expensive. It's expensive. I, I like that one. The opposite of simple harmonics. You're not wrong. Tones that overanalyze everything and are no fun at parties. I've experienced those tones. Harmonics that are complex. I think we're getting close here. Microtones. That's an intelligent answer. I like where this is going. Overtones. Okay. Harmonics that are created by distortion. They sound pleasing because the ratio of frequencies is mathematically closer to a whole number. Even harmonics create complex ratios and they don't sound as pleasant. And then we have harmonics with many repeats, usually in the octaves and fifths. So I think we're on to something here. There's something about octaves, odd and even harmonics. There's a lot of math involved here. I'm not good at that. But what I think, what I think an answer can be is let's take an octave fuzz. Old school primitive circuit. This is the Dan Electro Eisenhower. This is basically the Fox Tone Machine. And we're going to listen really close for complex harmonics. We're going to hear our note, but then we should hear above that note, like a screeching high-end octave that's tracking loosely, and that's complex harmonics. And uh, I'm probably going to turn on a rainbow machine. <laughs> complex in the harmonics. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Does, does anyone here have any earthy mid-range? Uh, is there any earthy mid-range to balance this out? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm alone in my basement. Uh, the quarantine's getting to me. Today's record time is brought to you by 2014's Everything Will Be Alright in the End. It's by Weezer. It's my third favorite Weezer album behind Blue and Green. I think it's underappreciated. I think it's really great. It's catchy. It's fun. The title alone is very fitting for this time of quarantine. And everything's going to be all right. I love this album because it's a mix of classic Weezer and it explores that newer type of Weezer that a lot of us aren't sure about yet. But it's a great album. I recommend it. I like it. I really love it and I want some more of it. I'm going to play it here in just a second and maybe you can play it as well and we'll be together in like a strange way. Go check it out. It's really good. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and really I'm just looking forward to going and wearing my complex harmonics t-shirt to the grocery store later. Um, that's going to be really fun. I might wear scooped mids as well. I just want to see what the reaction is. So if you feel like you would want to wear one of these shirts, head on over to thejhsshow.com. You can buy any of these shirts and other merch that we have. I had to put them up because really, I just want to build an army of weird, nerdy people 
who wear shirts that make no sense and we kind of take over the world. That's a dream of mine. You can be a part of that if you want. So yeah, go check that out. Also, there is a Patreon account, which is huge for us. It helps us with travel expenses as I go around and document on camera the stories of creators and preserve history. If you're a member of that account, you get monthly long form talks where I dig into some nice, really cool educational stuff that I'm studying and writing about. Um, also, it just it's a big, huge help, and we're really appreciative of all of our patrons. Uh, other than that, just hit like if you like the episode, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Just, just go live your life. Be safe. Have a wonderful day. Bye.